What's up, everybody? Just so you know, Lauer did send me these lenses, but otherwise didn't ask me to say anything. Anyway, enjoy the video, but keep that in mind. These are the Laua Argus Cine version lenses. We've got an 18 and a 25, both rocking the same ultra-fast T1.0 aperture from their standard versions that released a little while ago. You guys might remember those. So, of course, we'll go into this more with build quality, but they've got standardized gears, similar build quality and size and weight. It's all that stuff Let's get into that more later. I also just want to talk about the image of these lenses because sometimes with these ultra fast lenses, the image is a little bit optically compromised. Honestly, with this bright aperture, these two lenses, you can get a ton of different types of shots. You can get some beautiful images and even just testing these for a week, I'm already kind of falling in love with them. But they might not be for everybody, so stick around and we'll jump into pretty much everything you're gonna wanna know about these lenses. So yeah, if you've got the new GH7, an old GH4, a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, or something from Zcam or whoever, um, if you've got a Micro Four Thirds mount, these lenses are gonna be pretty amazing for getting some ultra shallow depth of feel. But that is only if they're any good. So let's jump into build quality first, but we're talking about everything. Build quality, focus breathing, image quality, and everything in between. So let's get into it. So like I alluded to before, and I didn't want to give everything away, but these lenses are kind of nailing it in terms of build quality and design when it comes to a dedicated cinema set. Now, there's a few little things that are interesting that we'll get into in a minute, but it's mostly good. So let's just go down the line here. We've got nearly identical size, weight, focus and aperture ring distances from each other. Both have a 77 millimeter filter thread and all the control rings on both lenses seem really smooth, turn a decent distance, which I'll put up here if I can kind of guesstimate it. There's not any official figures out there right now. So working with a follow focus or a focus polar is going to be a really great experience, but don't worry. I think the distance is just short enough that if you're a solo operator just using this and pulling off the barrel, that would probably be pretty fine too. Maybe slightly further than you'd want for something like that, but it, I didn't have a problem with it myself. So I love that they're versatile enough that you can use them both as a cinema lens in a set or as a solo operator. It, you know, once you get your hands on a true vintage or cinema lens, it's just a whole different ballgame. And yeah, these are proper cinema lenses. We've got distance markings, aperture markings, and the distance is on both sides, which is really nice. Although one little oddity in this category is on the left-hand side when you're holding the camera is feet and on the right-hand side is meters. So. I guess it's good that there is feet and meters, but you know, it's a little strange that it's not one or the other, or maybe both on one side. It's a small lens. I get there's limitations and I'm glad they have both feet and meters, but I don't know. I think this might be a little strange for some people, but again, it saves them from having to make two whole lens sets, one in feet and one in meters. Yeah. It's us America kind of ruining everything just a little bit for the rest of you. <laughs> There's a few other little oddities. Again, they don't really affect anything. They're not really bad, but I wanted to bring them up. Uh, I thought it was interesting how far the first focus distance is on the 18 millimeter. It's 99 feet, which is pretty long, right? I mean, that's insane accuracy, but on the 25 millimeter, which is more telephoto, which theoretically you'd want more options, um, it's a mere nine feet, 10 inches as the first marking after infinity. So. That's interesting. I'm not I'm not sure how that happened or why, and it doesn't really affect operation at all, in my opinion. I just thought it was worth mentioning. Another funny thing is that the uh, 18 millimeter starts at T1, of course, like both of them do, but stops right down to T1.4, smooth aperture ring, of course. But the 25 millimeter has a, a quick stop at T1.1. And another thing is they both have really nice lens caps. They have that really nice cinema, like velvet sort of feeling to put them on, although, I'll probably put a label on the front of these because if they're sitting, you know, cap up, it's kind of hard to tell which is which, but still really nice. The entire front part of the lens is a little sunken, so less likely to touch it with your fingerprints or putting filters on. And it acts as kind of a built-in lens hood, which definitely helps flare a little bit, which we'll get into a little bit later. There is a lens support sort of screw at the front of the lenses, which it looks like it can be removed. I didn't remove it, but I also didn't use it in my testing because the lenses are not that big and not that heavy and you know overall 
I think it's a really solid build quality. The focus rings, the aperture rings, it all feels smooth, it all feels nice, well built. And in terms of size, they're, you know, really pretty nice. They're, you know, maybe in the ballpark of like the Olympus 1.2 lenses, definitely smaller than the Leica 10 to 25, but Again, I think whether you rig this thing out with the cage and the follow focus and the monitor, or just use it straight onto the camera body with nothing else additional, it's still pretty balanced either way. So I like that versatility. One last thing, in terms of design and the build and everything like that, it looks just cool. I love the blue, yellow kind of ring and logo of Argus on it. I think it just looks really cool. It's a unique color scheme and I try to replicate it here, but I just, well, I'm really wanted to just show off my lighting. It's really basic, don't, okay, we can move on. So of course there's no autofocus in this thing, but the, like I said, the manual focus experience is really, really nice. The focus throw is just far enough. It's just well damped enough. Same with the aperture ring, although the aperture ring does get a little bit close at the end there with T8 not even really being listed, just a tiny little dot, but who's stopping these things down to T8 anyway? It should be noted, by the way, that they only stop down to T11, where most other lenses in Micro Four Thirds can go to 16 or 22 or even further, but who's really getting these lenses to stop it down past F4 or F5.6? Personally, me, I typically use them wide open. But anyway, back to manual focus. Yep, you're gonna have no problems doing very consistent, very repeatable manual focus. Again, either on the lens barrel or with a follow focus or with a focus puller. While we're on the subject of focusing, let's talk about focus breathing. Now, there is a little bit of focus breathing here, probably better than your average photo lens, but a little bit worse than your average, really super professional cinema lens. But again, for me, it wasn't a big deal. Here's the 18, see it's breathing a little bit. And the 25 is about the same. So maybe a little bit above average, but not like a standout performance here at all. But I don't care that much about focus breathing, let's be honest. So let's start going over image quality. So with our brick wall test, we're gonna look at a few things, you know, sharpness, haziness, dark corners, distortion, and we'll start with the 18 millimeter. So right away, I noticed a little bit of barrel distortion and that classic purple shift when wide open. The colors are pretty consistent between the two lenses, so at least if they're at the same aperture, they're gonna look pretty much the same. We also have a little bit of dark corners uh, wide open at T1.0, but when it comes to the actual sharpness, it's actually shockingly good in my opinion. I didn't go into direct comparisons, but the image is really decently sharp wide open, except for the very, very extreme corners. And this is from a super demanding 25 megapixel G9 Mark II sensor or the same sensor as the GH7. So yeah, anything less than this is gonna look even better. If anything, there's a slight ghosting and lower contrast. 1.4 sharpens up quite a bit and pushes those dark corners away. And honestly, this is a really good result already for most things for most people, in my opinion. Technically, it does get a little bit better going into two and 2.8 and four, just continuing to push those dark corners away. But yeah, and it stays pretty much the same until F8 and F11, which get a little bit softer. Again, why would you use F11 on a lens like this? I don't know. Moving on to the 25 millimeter color, vignetting, sharpness, everything like that looks pretty consistent with the 18 millimeter right away, which is a good thing because, you know, cinema lenses matching set is kind of what you want to do, and they did, so good job. I actually think the distortion might be slightly more exaggerated, a little bit more of that barrel distortion despite being a telephoto lens, but remember, since we're on micro four thirds, a 25 millimeter lens could still have the distortion of a 25 millimeter lens on full frame, so. It is what it is. I never really noticed it in you know everyday shooting. But if you're like super against distortion, there you are. Again, the sharpness wide open is already really good, especially with this wide of an aperture. Only the extreme corners fall off for me. Really nice result for such an extreme lens. As good as T1.0 is in every way, it improves a lot at 1.4 with more accurate color, better sharpness across the frame, and those dark corners being minimized at F2, 2.8, 4, and you know, again, same story, F8, F11, diffraction, there you go. So if you've used some other budget-ish 
uh, f1.4, f1.2 lenses, or you've used even some like medium priced f1, f.95 lenses for the system, these lenses are a fairly clear step up in image quality for me, at least, you know, with this first impression test I've been doing. I was really impressed and I hope they continue to make lenses of this caliber because while they're not 100% perfect at T1.0, I'm not really sure I'd want them to be. One aspect of lens design that I think is typically kind of neglected is your minimum focus distances and also your minimum focus image qualities. And the close focus of these lenses is really nice too, I'm not gonna lie. The 25 millimeter is pretty standard when it comes to that 50 millimeter equivalent for most lens systems. Maybe a little bit better. It's about 10 inches or 0.25 meters, at least according to the lens itself, which gives you pretty great close-up results on a micro forward third sensor. And again, that is measured from the sensor. So you're actually getting pretty dang close. The 18 millimeter is what surprised me because whether it was image quality or distance, 17, 18 millimeters on micro four thirds have generally been kind of disappointing to me, if I'm going to be honest. This lens manages to have a very solid distance and image quality. So we've got about an eight inch or 0.2 meters on the 18 millimeter, which with the different focal lengths is actually about the same reproduction as the 25 millimeter without being exactly the same. It's a little different, right? But the image quality is pretty solid on both of these lenses when focused as close as possible, which, you know, it's a little bit worse. I'm not gonna lie. Maybe a slight bit of softness and some extra ghosting here and there, but overall, really solid result. I think this is one of the most underrated aspects of a lens and I wish more people talked about it. Something a lot of people really like me to test for is longitudinal and general chromatic aberration. So the 18 millimeter actually doesn't suffer from that much colorful chromatic aberration, but the ghosting is pretty gnarly and hazy in this particular situation. But stopping at a 1.4 or two already vastly improved the situation. And I don't think there's any need to go past 2.8 to be honest. The 25 millimeter on the other hand has some more of that classic kind of blue yellow kind of chromatic aberration which doesn't look super great on this subject but 1.4 clears it up a bit and of course better again at 2, 2.8 pretty much no need to go further than that. Again I know this looked a little bit colorful but for a lens of this extreme aperture it's actually not a bad performance at all. Now let's talk about flare. I love flare. I especially with cine lenses it gives that sort of extra character and vibe and while well, these lenses are definitely a vibe whether you like it or not that's up to you flare is always a little tricky it's you know a creative tool and it's also a technical performance of the lens so if your contrast or image is covered by tons of flare elements that could be amazing for some projects or terrible for others. The 18 millimeter honestly isn't terrible in terms of like actual legitimate performance. Sure, there's some flare elements, green rainbow things. They're pretty soft though, so I like the look aesthetically. There is a sort of veiling orange flare and like lack of contrast flare right around the edges, but stopping out at 1.4 pretty much cleans the flare right up other than those main green rainbow elements, right? The 25 millimeter is the real kind of test of whether you're gonna love or hate these lenses, I think. Uh, spoilers, I kind of love it, but same story here. We're looking at greenish, rainbowy kind of flare elements, but the huge first thing most people notice is this giant orange ring, or even maybe more than one ring, around any bright source of light in your image. And I mean any light, like a, a light in the frame, right out of the frame, or way out of the frame, that orange ring is gonna be in your image somewhere. And personally, like I said, I'm a huge fan. This is such a crazy flare, I kind of love it. But it is a technical issue with these lenses. Fortunately, you can stop down to f1.4. Again, you probably don't want to, but if it's ever peeking into your shot a little bit more than you would want, just stop the lens down to 1.4 and you're good to go. You're losing some of that light, some of that character, but it will probably be worth it for some people in some situations to not have this giant, you know, cosmic circle around your image. So again, 18 millimeter, kind of an above average performance for a lens like this because I've tested some other lenses that performed way worse with similar specs. But the 25 millimeter, if it didn't have that orange ring wide open, it would probably be above average, but that's gonna be a, a either love it or hate it 
for a lot of people. So, you know, actually let me know down below. Do you love this orange ring or do you think it's gonna be a little too much? Let me know. Speaking of the flares and everything, let's go right into Sun Stars and let's be honest, they're pretty unremarkable. 5.6, 8.11, anything in there is gonna be pretty whatever. So last thing with these lenses and any super fast lens that everybody wants to know about is how is the bokeh? And we have mostly good things, at least in my opinion, but you know, I'll let you make your own conclusions. Let me just go over what I'm, I found in some of my images. So the 25 millimeter is actually the more normal of the two lenses, so we'll start with that. So it has, you know, some classic cat's eye in the edges of the frame, maybe some slight outlining to the edges of bokeh highlights, but overall, really nice. No texture, no real chromatic aberration and colors like we saw before. And honestly, the cat's eye isn't even that strong. And, you know, I'm just going to say it. I don't even mind cat's eye. I actually kind of like it. There you go. It's giving, it's giving Petzval lens. It's giving Helios swirly. I like that. It can really bring you into a subject. But if you don't like it, maybe not the lens for you. Although we'll see a little bit later that stopping these lenses down makes them very kind of clinical in a certain way. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. The 18 millimeter, on the other hand, is a lot crazier. And depending on your focus distance and background and everything like that, it is crazy in different ways too. It's strange. It's one of those lenses that has super soft bokeh in the middle, but the edges of the frame either have extreme cat's eye bokeh or these weird misshapen ones that have this sort of like V shape or like an explosion of bokiness going towards the middle. It's, it's kind of hard to describe, but I have seen this on other lenses. Even expensive pro lenses like my Leica 10 to 25 has this at the wide angle, but not so much towards 25, more like the 10 to 12. This lens's bokeh is at times both softer and busier than the 25 millimeters, but still we've got no onion rings, no real texture, no extra colors from the chromatic aberration. Although maybe a little bit of weird ghostliness coming into the bokeh here a little bit. So while the bokeh is a little different from lens to lens, I think overall, I really like the characters of these lenses. And you know, if you stop it down a little bit, you're gonna get some polygonal shapes. You can see the aperture blades, but it is a much more even clean look across the frame. So it does have that versatility of being a little quirky and weird wide open and a little bit more subdued at f1.4 or 2 which could be good if you're using it on more like commercial projects or whatever so let's talk about the summary of these lenses now i only had a week to play with them so if anything else comes up maybe i'll make a follow-up video a comparison video to similar lenses or if it's small i'll just put a link in the comments i don't know how expensive these lenses are but based on the normal photo lenses they're gonna be pretty decently priced i think lawa does a pretty good job at making things relatively affordable again i just everything is really solid it's as good or better than most other lenses in this t 1.0 f.95 category i found and overall i just really loved the experience working with them the 18 millimeter being a little bit more quirky in some ways like the bokeh and then the 25 millimeter being a little bit more quirky in other ways like the flare, but both lenses color and characteristics matching up just good enough that I would definitely use them as a set. It's got everything you need to use them as a really reliable cinema set in your video production, short films, music videos. I brought these along to weddings and I had no problem using them solo. And they're just a very versatile lens, solo, big crew, cinema, weddings, clean and clinical and commercial or like quirky and dreamy for like a wedding or a short film or something it's it's nice that these tick a lot of boxes in a lot of ways but there is one big flaw that you might have heard me talk about before with a few different lenses at this point and that is the fact that there is only two i wish they would build up this kit i have kind of floated the idea to them that you know hey we could maybe just adapt your APS-C and full frame lenses into uh, a, a cinema housing with a micro four thirds mount you know other companies have done similar things and while you're throwing away a little bit of image circle and everything like that it's still getting you those more telephoto reaches I do think also 18 millimeters in the wide end is a little bit long so you might want to pick up a Laowa 6, 7.5, 10 millimeter on the wide end just to have it from the same company, but it's not going to match 
100% with the focus gears and of course the aperture or things like that. Now, I did try to keep the comparisons to other lenses down in this review overall, but until they come out with more lenses, and especially if you want to go to that wide angle, typically the lens I recommend is the Voigtlander 10.5mm f.95. While it doesn't have the focus gears and it's not going to be able to easily swap in and out as seamlessly as these two Laowa or any future Laowa lenses might be, it is going to match that f.95 t1.0 spec with a 21mm full frame equivalent. So. If not having a wide angle lens is holding you back from this kit, definitely look into the Voigtlander because I think that 10.5 and this 18 and 25 is gonna be a killer combination, at least until Lau could come up with something to beat that 10.5 because I don't think anyone's been able to quite compete with that particular lens. Although, in fairness, if we're gonna talk about Voigtlander, I do think these lenses are a little bit sharper and a little bit less hazy than the Voigtlander lenses, which I think are already pretty solid wide open. So that's really telling you something. But I can't just have a, a completely positive review, and I do have to point out that some people might feel a little limited with just two lenses, but if you do get these two lenses and they slot into a bigger kit or not, you're still gonna have a great time, and these are really fantastic lenses for what they are. Pick up one, pick them up both, Either one or both would do some amazing work if you're trying to get that super shallow depth of field cinematic look on Micro Four Thirds. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. You got any other questions about these lenses, put them down in the comments below. Let me know what you think of them. Would you pick them up? Would you wait? And what do you think of the overall design? Let me know. And if you do like, comment, subscribe, especially if you subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.